So in this video, I want to talk about a topic that uh, I'm quite passionate about. I guess you could say passion is the right word. So for this topic, this is top 15 signs, in my opinion, top 15 signs that your martial arts teacher is fake. Why I'm doing this video is because I see so many fake martial arts teachers that are out there, whether they're on uh, social media, you know, Instagram, whatever, YouTube, right? Especially YouTube. And these fake martial arts teachers are just basically exploiting people who have no, no idea that they're being exploited. They have no idea that they're being lied to. How do I know? Well, I've been doing martial arts for over 20 years and over five different styles and, you know, fight and compete regularly. So I know what is a fake martial art and what is a real martial art. And I know what fake teachers are and I know what real teachers are. So let's get right down to it. The top 15 signs that your martial arts teacher is fake including any one of these YouTube channels and social media, martial arts influencers and gurus, check their content out. And if they make it on this list, more often than not, they're fake and you're being lied to. Number one is the top of the list is that if they use abstract language, if they peddle some form of woo or they peddle, for, peddle you some form of uh, mystical, uh, unexplainable uh, type of BS where they can't actually break it down for you scientifically. None of what they say makes sense. It's very abstract. It's very conceptual. Okay. It's mystical. There's no proof that whatever they're saying is actually rooted in reality. Then that's the, what, that's the first sign that they're fake. Okay. They do these demonstrations where they're pushing people back 10 feet but they can't prove that any of that stuff is real. Either they're, they're incredibly out of shape or they're really frail. It's because if you have a guy who is abnormally out of shape, like that person's obese basically, right? So he's got like a pot belly, okay? That means he doesn't take good care of himself, okay? He or she doesn't take good care of themselves. That means they, they don't have any physicality whatsoever, okay? More often times than not, they don't have any physicality. You know, if, if they walk up a flight of stairs and they, they, they look like they can't even make it on, off the top of a flight of stairs, they don't have any physicality. So how are they supposed to teach you anything? If they don't take care of themselves physically, how are they supposed to show you what their martial arts is about? How are they supposed to show you if anything works, right? They can't because they don't have the physical attributes to do so. Now on the flip side of that, they're abnormally frail. Okay, what that means is they're like a martial arts teacher that's, you know, maybe 90 pounds or something like that, or 100 pounds or something like that. They look like they've never touched a weight in their life. They look like they, they never lifted any weights. Uh, they, they look like they're not athletic at all. They, they've never done any athletic activity in their life. Now, this is not age discrimination or, or gender discrimination or anything like that. If they're older and they're like an older, you know, coach or trainer or whatever like that, that's fine. I'm not talking about the age here, like if they're 50 and above, okay, different story, you know, they, 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 they're older, right? And that's totally fine. Uh, but learn from them in, in a different way, learn from them, you know, from their, from their mind, right? From their experience, from the mental, right? But if they're relatively young and they're really frail, chances of, of them being a real martial arts teacher is also not good because they can't show you physically how any of the moves work. So if, if, if they, teach you some type of grappling, they can't do it on you, right? <laughs> because you're stronger than them. Or they do, they, they're teaching you some kind of striking, but they lack, you know, punching power or anything like that. Then you're not learning from a real martial artist. You're not learning from someone that's actually trained hard and put in the time and work. Uh, and, and half of martial arts is, is your physical ability. So if they have no physical attributes whatsoever, bad sign. Really obvious one. Uh, doesn't apply to everybody, but applies to most people, okay? They don't allow you to touch them and they, they don't allow you to spar them ever, okay? So they'll only teach class, but they'll never ever train alongside you. They'll never train with you. They'll never let you spar them. They'll never let you test any techniques out on them. They'll never let you roll with them. Nothing like that, okay? Now, I understand if they are, you know, 40, 50 and above and maybe they have had injuries before, that's all fine, right? That, that will be communicated beforehand. And then, you know, you do light sparring, you do light rolling, right? 
But if they, if you never get a chance to test out what they really, really know, and they basically just, just stand, or they basically just sit at the back of the class, and they're just monitoring wherever the class goes, and, and someone else is teaching or whatnot, and that's, that's a bad sign. They, they, they can't do the martial art themselves, so they're only teaching, theoretically. Same thing with the, with the previous one. They never spar, they only demonstrate, right? So if they're a martial arts teacher that only demonstrates moves against compliant opponents, they only demonstrate things against uh, their own students, which obviously the, the, their own student is not gonna be disrespectful and uh, not comply with them. So if they can only demonstrate their moves, they're like, oh, you know, like grab my hand like this and I'll flip you like this. And then the other guy flips himself over in the air and stuff like that. That's a fake martial arts teacher because they can't spar, they can't show it live. It's not live. They've never competed in any kind of martial arts competition with any reasonable level of difficulty. Okay, this is, this is an important one. Now, uh, some people will disagree with this. Some people will say, well, you know, some of the most famous boxing trainers in the world, they never competed, they never fought. It's like, okay, now, those are more like exceptions to the rule, okay? You could be a great teacher, you could be a great technician, but the overwhelming majority is that if you are a good martial arts teacher, you will have competed at some point in your martial arts career, uh, whether that's at the local level or whatever, international, world, whatever. Okay, you will have competed at some point. Now, if that person has never competed, their fight record is zero and zero, or they've never won any championships in their whole life, that's fishy, right? Because they can't demonstrate that whatever that they're teaching actually works, okay? So they need to have, have had some kind of competition experience or they have to have some kind of real life experience to back up whatever they're teaching. So for example, if they, they fought in a couple wars or they were in the army, or they worked as a bouncer for 20 years, or whatever it is, they have to have some type of real life experience or, or competition experience. And if they don't, fishy. Similar to last one, but this is more specifically talking about fighting now. So, okay. So if they have a, f they, if they have a fight record that at least shows that they went out and they fought, they experienced what it's like to fight, they experience what it's like to use your martial arts in a non-compliant fighting scenario so that it actually works, right? If your martial arts teacher does not have a fight record at all, oh and oh fight record, or maybe the last time they competed was when they were 16 years old or 18 years old in the kids division or something like that, not even the adult division or in the junior division or whatever, that's a, that's a bad sign because how do you know if anything that they teach works in, in reality, okay? In, in a fighting scenario, how do you know whatever they're teaching works? You don't, because they never fought. They never actually tested their theories, techniques, moves, concepts in a fighting environment. So all of this stuff is theoretical. What they're teaching is theory. It's like being in a classroom and, uh, you know, learning uh, how to you do math in a classroom, right? But thinking that because you know math in a classroom, that automatically makes you an astronaut. It's like, no, you actually have to fly into space, actually land on the moon, land on the Mars, actually have experience manning these space missions before you come back and be like, hey, I'm an actual astronaut with experience. Or a guy that, you know, uh, cleans guns or maintains guns in, 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 a, in, a, in a controlled environment versus a combat veteran who's been out there shot at live targets, you know, has kill counts and then came back and then taught the class how to actually use guns. It's like two different things. So this is a big sign, right? For, for, for anybody that's out there who, who, if they defend this, right? If people out there defend themselves with this, they're like, oh wait, I don't need to have live combat experience. I've been, uh, you know, teaching and theorizing for over 20 years, I don't need to have live combat experience. Be very, very careful when they say this kind of thing. It's like a, a huge defensive uh, type of tactic that they will use. They'd be like, well, I don't need live experience. You know, I know my stuff works. I'm secure with myself. No, always ask, can you show it live? Do you have fight experience? Do you have fight record? Because if you can't show it live, who knows whatever you're saying works, right? It probably doesn't. 
they never produced any good students. Then this is another you know sign right here. This is how you could tell, right? So let's say they make a bunch of excuses, or maybe they have reasons why they don't have a fight record. Okay, maybe they're like, well, my art doesn't doesn't fight. Like we don't have com com competitive sports in my art. Okay, uh, I have injuries. That's why I never competed. Okay, fine. Um, uh, uh, I'm old. I don't compete. Okay, sure. Those are all legit reasons, right? So now let's talk about your students. If these teachers have students that actually went out there and competed and fought and won championships, won belts, things like that. Okay, you know what? They're legit. They're legit. Because at least you taught your students and they did something. But if not even their students went out there and competed and did anything, basically the teacher never competed and did anything, never won anything, and their students never competed and never won anything either. So basically, you guys can be living in La La Land doing, you know, doing like push hands, like energy stuff and you know, it's not real. You guys are basically just make-believe because you have no competition uh, experience either at the teacher level or at the student level. They act like they own you, okay? They act very insecure about themselves uh, and, and they're jealous of other teachers, okay? This is another good sign, okay? This is another good sign, okay? So a, a real martial arts teacher, someone with experience, someone who knows that their martial arts uh, system and their school works, the way they teach works and everything like that, they're not gonna get insecure about their student uh, jumping to another school to try things out or, or, or jumping to uh, another uh, martial arts style to try things out. They're not insecure like that because if you know that your teaching is good and your quality is good and you have the experience to back up that, that uh, teaching and you have real world results that back up that teaching, your students will be coming back for more and more and more, provided that you're doing everything else correct, okay? They're gonna be coming back for more and more and more. They, they're not just gonna just jump somewhere else and be like, oh yeah, you know what, this place is better, I'm gonna stay. Well, in, in that case, it just shows that, you know, the market has a better product than you do, right? So you as a martial arts teacher failed somewhere if you are always insecure about, well, don't leave my school, like don't go to someone else's school, you know, my style's better or my school's better, like come train with me. Like if you have to beg people to come train with you, that's a problem, that's a quality issue. This is why competition exists, right? If other people can produce better competitive results, if other people can produce uh, better classes, better students, why wouldn't someone that's paying, you know, for a membership to go over to another school and get a better experience if they're, if they're paying for a product? right? If they act like they own you, if they act like, hey, you must train here. You can't go to some other school and do this and do that. And if they're jealous of other teachers, right? That's kind of like a cult-like mentality. And you got to be be careful when you're inside a cult, right? Because they could be teaching you false things. They could be teaching you fake things. And they don't want you to find out the truth from another school, right? Opposite of that is if you're a real martial arts teacher, if you're a legit martial arts teacher, you shouldn't be insecure. You should be completely secure with who you are and you'd be like, yeah, go ahead, try out, you know, who, so, ho, try out that martial art, try out so-and-so school. Don't worry, like once you see the quality that they are, you're gonna know that we're the best or we're one of the best and you're gonna come back and you're gonna continue learning from us. This is, this is another one of those uh, signs that's, you know, gonna, take people off and piss people off, but you know, this is the truth, okay? People that only hide behind their style or their teacher or their lineage. So let me give you an example. You can go to a Muay Thai school and that guy might be like, well, you know, I am, you know, so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so crew's lineage of Muay Thai and you know, we're the authentic Muay Thai. Or you go to some other school, it's like, we're so-and-so and so lineage of Kung Fu and we're the authentic Kung Fu, okay? That's great. But what about the martial arts teacher itself? Are you any good? Chances are, if they keep talking about their lineage and they keep talking about, you know, who they trained with, who their teacher was, all this kind of stuff, chances are they're fake because you, you, all you have to ask them is like, well, what about you? Are you any good? And if they can't show that, they can't tell you, well, yeah, I've fought over 50 fights myself, I've won championships myself, or I've trained so and so and so and so, if they can't tell you those things, then basically they're just piggybacking, okay? They're just riding the coattails of the previous masters that came before them in their famous lineage or their famous style, and they can't produce any results for themselves, so then they're just piggybacking, you know? They're just like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm Muay Thai, so therefore, you know, Muay Thai is great. Like, no, 
Just because you're Muay Thai doesn't mean your Muay Thai is any good, right? There could be so many different varying levels of Muay Thai or like, hey, I'm a boxer. You know, I train boxing. Boxing is, you know, the sweet science. Learn from me. It's like, okay, well, what quality of a boxer are you? What quality, what quality of a boxing trainer are you, right? And so on and so forth. Karate, Kung Fu, all those kinds of things. Their martial arts or their martial arts school is actually a brand. And they basically made up a martial arts name for their martial art. This one you kind of have to do more do more research on. Okay, sometimes there's a there's a legitimate reason why they called their martial art a certain brand because maybe they've developed it over decades and decades and decades, and then they've rebranded it so that it can differentiate itself from a previous version of the martial art. You know, for example, you know, Wing Chun turned into JKD. For example, that would be like an example. There would be Tenth Planet Jiu Jitsu, which is different from. Uh, you know, regular Gracie Jiu Jitsu or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. You know, that would be an example. So you're gonna have to do some research on this one. This one isn't necessarily that they're fake. It's just you have to know what you're getting into. But on the on the fake side of things, here's some signs to know. You know, if they just made something up on their on their own, okay? Is if they turn the martial arts into a brand. So for example, they they add words like applied Jiu Jitsu, practical boxing. Uh, you know, realistic Krav Maga or, uh, you know, reality jujitsu. You know what I mean? Like, like, like gimmicky, gimmicky names that try and describe what the martial arts should be. When in reality, you shouldn't need to use any gimmicks. You shouldn't need to describe that your martial arts is practical or that your martial arts is realistic or whatever, because the martial art that you teach should just be that way. <laughs> you don't have to describe anything more. You don't have to put a gimmick behind it. They have a fake belt or they have a fake rank or they have a rank, but in their own martial arts style that they create. So for example, uh, let's say I, I created Joe Jiu-Jitsu, JJJ. In the Joe Jiu-Jitsu system, I am a 10th rank red belt in Joe Jiu-Jitsu. What does that mean? Like that's not a widely accepted system, right? Like unless that system is widely accepted and maybe they've done a good job, you know, doing the branding and marketing and affiliating and everything like that. And now it's world, it's worldwide renowned, right? Now you have like a hundred Joe Jiu Jitsu locations everywhere. And I'm a 10th rank uh, red belt in Joe Jiu Jitsu. Then maybe, maybe there's some legitimacy, maybe. But if nobody's ever really heard of that style and you kind of made that style up on your own and you kind of gave yourself a super high inflated ranking, that's a sign of a fake martial arts teacher. This is a funny one. This is a really funny one, okay? So if they have sort of like a social media screen name or they have a screen name or they have an online persona or they have like a YouTube channel or whatever and they call themselves, they, they give themselves a title and then, and then they make you call them that title. So for example, master so-and-so, or they go sifu so-and-so, or sensei so-and-so, you know, so like, uh, you know, sensei Bob, you have to call me sensei Bob, or they go master, you know, whatever, master Quan, you have to call me master Quan, or any kind of combination, or like sifu, Rodriguez, you have to call me Sifu Rodriguez. It's like, okay, that's a sign that you're fake because if you were that great, you wouldn't need to give yourself that kind of a title. Your, your students would naturally want to call you that. They will want to call you, you know, whatever, uh, master, professor, Sifu, teacher, sensei, whatever. They, they would want to call you that, okay? The acceptable titles, okay, in the modern day era, the acceptable titles is like, you know, coach, you know, sir, or maybe professor, maybe uh, teacher, right? Like that's acceptable. But if it's like something really like kind of classical and, and, and very kind of inflated, like, okay, you must call me by seafood. You must call me sensei. Sign of, uh, you know, could be fake. They never teach classes themselves, okay? They get their student or they get their uh, you know black belt student, or they get their teenager student to run the class, and they never teach class themselves. They never teach regular class. They never teach advanced class. They, they don't teach at all. All you see is their their students teaching the class. That is a sign of a fake martial arts teacher because 
They don't give a crap. They don't give a damn about you. <laughs> they don't give a damn about your martial arts progress. They don't need, they don't want to share what they actually know about the martial art with you. They just want to make money. They just want to get you into the school, make money, kind of just get people to come in, have the students teach classes and then kick you out afterwards. Okay, so they don't teach classes themselves, shady. They charge fees for seminars, but those seminars, they barely teach a thing. They basically don't teach anything at all. Okay, so in these seminars, they where they charge money and they have like, you know, they make people basically pay for seminars in order for you to train with them, things like that, like celebrity trainers and celebrity coaches, but basically they're, they're, they're fake martial arts teachers, right? Um, you go to their training camp or you go to their whatever seminar and they basically don't teach you a, a single thing. It, it's like a, it's like a motivational seminar. It's like a motivational speech seminar. You go there, you know, you don't even get to spar with them. It's just like, they'll touch your hand or something like that. Like that's all fake. That's all bogus stuff, right? A lot of people get tricked by this kind of stuff, right? People that really don't, don't, don't know any better, right? They, they really don't know any better. So they, they go to these classes, they go to these uh, seminars. Basically it's like a celebrity thing. When you go there and you're like, wow, I got to train with so-and-so. It's like, they're not real, dude. They're not real. Last and final sign. This is obviously going to be, you know, controversial. People are going to, you know, not like that I point this out, okay? I'm going to get hate for this one. I'm going to get flack for this one. But, you know, I'm here to uphold the truth. I'm here to be honest, okay? So they only teach and attract a certain type of student. And what I mean by that is if they are a fake martial arts teacher, then chances are all of their students are fake too. If they're a fake martial arts teacher, they'll only attract the type of student that is unathletic, doesn't have any real uh, fight IQ, is not very aggressive, doesn't have any physical attributes, right? Maybe they're older, right? Maybe they're retired, you know, they're, they're older, they're, they're retirees or they're, they're, you know, pensioners. Maybe they're guys that are out of shape, okay? So basically the type of demographic 40 and above, right? Age 40 and above where they're not really, te they're not really training martial arts seriously. They're kind of just very, very casual people that are training martial arts. So these are the types of people that gravitate towards fake martial arts the most is because one, they don't know any better. And number two, all the other martial arts are too hard for them. This is too hard for them. They can't physically keep up with it. They can't physically do it. So why not? gravitate towards a fake martial arts teacher that basically teaches them nothing other than making them feel good about themselves, teaching them fake martial arts. And that's the truth. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, if you're not already subscribed, or you're not already like this video, please like and subscribe. And uh, there's always more content.